Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, we are so glad that you have chosen this time to spend with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. If this is your first time to worship with us online, we're so pleased that you've joined with us today. I want to encourage you to use our contact form. The link for that is in the comment section. There's also a QR code that's up on the screen for you. Just to use that today, this is a wonderful way that we can be in contact with you. Please leave your name, your email address in particular so we can get that e-newsletter to you that has all of the information about ways we can connect and be in service together and to grow in faith Faith together. And then also on that contact form, it's a place for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So we encourage everyone to use our contact form. Today is a wonderful day of celebration. We're continuing with our Sharing God's Gifts worship series, and it is also communion for all people. So I want to encourage you now, if you have not already done so, to gather up some bread or crackers, some kind of a baked good, and then some juice or some kind of a beverage so that you can join with us in our time of communion that's later on in the worship service. And then I also want to remind you that when we join together for worship, we do covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. We covenant to participate, meaning that this isn't just a random video that you're watching, this is worship. So we really want you to go ahead and stand up and sing when it's time to sing, pray when it's time to pray, take communion with us when it's time to do that, and really fully participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way we're in our comment section together, the way we're maybe gathered with people as we're worshiping on 
online, the way we're sending this out into the world, that all of it is a wonderful blessing to everyone who is involved. Again, we are so glad that you are here and welcome to worship. Please join us in singing Walk by Faith. Please join with me in a spirit of prayer as I offer our opening prayer. Holy God, we are grateful for this time of worship, rest, rejoicing, and generosity. Open our hearts to you and fill them with peace. Open our mouths to sing your praise and fill them with laughter and joy. Open our entire beings to you that we may overflow with a good measure of your love shaken together and running over. Let the joy of worship overflow in generosity of your giving to our purposes and work in our community and world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community, peace be with you. Hi, I'm Alderwoman Erin Conley at Trunk or Tree. Peace be with you. Hi, we're the Cloud Family. Peace be with you. I'm Karen and this is Chris Brown and we are members here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I am so excited to let you know that it's time for small talk. So I want to encourage all the children who are with us in online worship to get in really close to your device, to your screen so that you can see and hear everything that is going on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, who's our director of children and youth ministries and her special assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in really close right now for small talk. Hello everyone, it is Miss Lori and Laud and Luna and we are here today on our first Sunday of November. We're going to talk a little bit about thankfulness, aren't we? 
Mm -hmm. Yes. We do that a lot in November, coming off of Halloween season. And before we get to Christmas, we take a little pause. And even though we should think all the time about the things we're thankful for, we do it particularly a lot in November. Sometimes it's hard to be thankful. Right, Luna? Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to be thankful. Like, let's say you maybe have even prayed for something. Maybe you've prayed for your team to win. And what if they don't? I know, right? What if they don't win? What do you do then? Can you still find something to be thankful for? Mm -hmm. You can be thankful for the opportunity to play in that big game. You can be thankful for getting better at whatever you're doing. Yeah, it's always things to be thankful for. Luna's very thankful for her biscuits. She loves her biscuits. So does Laud. Because we can't get them open. Luna's thankful for lots of things. And you are probably thankful for lots of things too, like your toys, your family, food, right? Yeah, we're thankful for lots of things. So when you think about being thankful, think about always having something to be thankful for because there's always something to be thankful for. Even if you have to look a little bit. And sometimes it's not the things that you wanted most, but there's something to be thankful for. Okay, Luna, you want your treat? Yeah, maybe not. I think she's camera shy. Lot will take it. Bye guys. Hi, I'm Curtis Dion, and I am the chair of the finance committee at DAUMC. I'm Justine Dion. I'm a member of Esther Circle and the Young Adult Sunday School class, and I am co-chair of the Cookie Walk Committee. Curtis and I first attended DAUMC in July of 2011 and became members in 2012, making us members for nine years. Prior to coming to Douglas, we were attending church in Athens. We both grew up in the Methodist Church, so we decided to look for a Methodist church. When we were church shopping, Douglas was the second church we visited. After that visit, we didn't visit any other churches. We felt that Douglas was the place that we belonged. What I like most about Douglas is that here I find people who are genuinely living out their faith. This shows through the ministries our church participates in, our commitment to being an inclusive church, and our involvement in our neighborhood and community. I have seen my faith grow and change since coming here. I know that this is a great place for our family to learn more about God and what it means to be faithful disciples of Christ. Another reason we love DAUMC is the sense of belonging we have here. As time has progressed, DAUMC has been involved in some major milestones in our life together. We were married in this church. We chose to get married here because it was a church that we had chosen together and it is our church. Our son Aaron and daughter Meredith were both baptized in this church. We've really found a sense of belonging here. Giving to the church has been something that we were taught at a young age. Both of our parents taught us the importance of giving to the church. Now as adults with full-time jobs, we have found a spiritual discipline in giving to the church. As most of you know, I'm the chairperson of the finance committee here at the church. Yes, I know how much the church expenditures are. However, as I've gotten older, I've found that giving isn't to meet the church expenses. Giving is a spiritual discipline that I believe is important in each person's relationship with God. Each year, we prayerfully consider how much we will give to the church. We encourage you to do the same over the next week. Hi, I'm Steve Dunker. I've been a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for several years. I'm a member of the Finance Committee and the Welcome and Inclusion Team. Our first reading from the Bible is from the prophet Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible readings. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, 
and thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. Our second reading from the Bible is Luke, chapter 6, verses 32 through 38. Jesus said, If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from you whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend nothing, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. We continue to spend time here with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in intentional prayer during this season of sharing God's gifts. And I am so heartened that so many of you have offered a prayer commitment card in solidarity with your church family. Prayer is foundational to this journey of worship, reflection, and generosity that we are on. And you can still join in prayer solidarity with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church using the link for our online prayer commitment card which is available in the comments. And we'll put your commitment into our special offering basket that we have right here on the altar in Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And it's been so much fun to see your pictures on social media of how you are using our new window clings to celebrate and share about Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We would love to send you this window cling as a gift of gratitude. Just let us know in the church office and we'll send it to you. And then this week, we have the devotion and prayer guide available for you to further deepen your prayer and reflection during this season. I hope that these resources will help you have a deep and honest encounter with God and that you will lead you to decisions about how you uh, want to give your money and your time and your talent and resources. Many of you will receive that devotion and prayer guide in the mail this week. You can also access it through the link in our upcoming e-newsletter. And then I want you to mark Mark your calendars for next weekend as we kick off our two weeks of celebrating God's gifts. We're going to welcome the Reverend Mike Potts as our guest preacher. And during these two weeks of celebrating God's gifts, we will have the opportunity to offer and bless commitments to giving uh, to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for the coming year. And then, of, co of course, all of these resources will be coming in the mail. They'll be available through the e-newsletter or just contact us in the church office and we'll get those resources to you. I'm so excited excited for our upcoming celebrations. I hope you are too, and I really hope that you will join with us. During our journey with sharing God's gifts, we've spent time understanding and seeking God's guidance in prayer and exploring how powerfully God invests in God's people, in us blessing us with gifts, talents, and resources to share in meaningful and powerful ways in our community and in our world. Today, we're exploring a foundational truth about who we are. God created human beings with a willingness to give to God and to others. It's who we are. It's deeply ingrained in us. We actually have this deep-seated need to be generous. I think we see this all the time in children's natural willingness to give and share. You need some Cheerios? Here, have some Cheerios. You need to borrow my stuffed animal for a little bit to have some comfort? You go right ahead. Need a binky? Here, have a suck on mine. It'll help you out. Need a hug, a smile, or just be close? I got you covered. Or take Christmas. It's coming, you know. People who don't love and follow Jesus, who don't know God, or may even reject God's love in their lives, even they will give to their family, friends, and sometimes to strangers, and find satisfaction in it too. 
We are hardwired to be generous, and not just at Christmas, and not just as manipulated by our retail establishments to pad their bottom line at the end of the year. God has created us to find joy and fulfillment and peace in being truly generous, deeply generous, sacrificially generous with our money, our time, our talents, our very true selves. But there are two rather loud voices that try to drown out God's a God-given impulse that we have to be generous. One of those loud voices is fear. And it's really a two-pronged kind of thing. There's this fear of what might happen to us if we don't have enough. We think, if I share what I have, there might not be enough left for me and for mine. This gets bundled with a misplaced idea about the true source of our security. Too often we think the source of our security is money. Bundled together, the fear and our misunderstanding of security, these get together in our heads and our hearts and they keep us from being generous, tempting us to move beyond saving or wise financial practices into a hoarding and a scarcity mentality. We've certainly seen this play out during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the other rather loud voice that can hold us back from generosity is simply, well, our self-centeredness. Our culture really lives within this idea of self-centeredness. It's a basic value in our culture that says life is found in the abundance and richness of our stuff and the experiences that we can have in this life and about the exercise of our personal freedoms no matter who it harms. And then it's about what we want and what we want right now. In our heads and hearts, we get this voice going that says, if I give, there won't be enough left for me and really, it's all about me. Okay, this is where Jesus comes in. One of the gospel truths is that when we love and follow Jesus and give ourselves to him, allowing him to be the Lord of our lives, our teacher, our savior, our friend, this is when we find that the Holy Spirit begins to work in us and through us, changing us from the inside all the way through to the outside. When we trust Jesus with our life, we find our fears begin to fade. When we trust Jesus with our life, we find our goals in life shift from seeking personal safety, security, or pleasure to seeking to please God and deeply caring for others. When we trust Jesus with our life, we love God with our hearts, our minds, our souls, our strength, and we love our neighbors as ourselves. Of course, we still struggle with fear and self-centeredness. Sometimes we place our trust wrongly or struggle with a scarcity mentality. But the more we grow in our love of God and trust in Jesus, the more we realize our lives belong to him and the more generous we become. We find that there is more joy to be experienced in doing things for other people and for God than we ever found in doing things just for ourselves. We come to believe deep down that life is a gift and everything belongs to God. All that we have, all that we are is held in trust and God has created us to give in the way that God gives freely, abundantly, in love and in joy and with great gratitude. We see this generosity in our Bible from the earliest stories of God's relationship with God's people. From the very beginning, God's people gave some portion of the best that they had to God. This gift offered to God was called the first fruits or the tithe, and it amounted to one-tenth of your flocks or your crops or your income. We see in the book of Genesis, the very first book of our Bible, that Abraham, the father of all of God's faithful people, was the first to give a tithe or tenth. Now, you might say, Pastor Meredith, that is all Old Testament stuff, and we are Jesus people. That whole flocks and crops and one-tenth of my chickens and vegetables and all that kind of stuff, come on. Well, here's the deal. We don't dismiss the Old Testament like that because much of what we find in these books is about how we are to treat one another and how it is we are to treat our stuff. 
Jesus, using his Bible, the Old Testament, teaches us that he came not to abolish the Hebrew law, the teachings of the Old Testament, but came to fulfill them. And using the Old Testament teaching, Jesus shows just how he fulfills them. As such, Christians throughout our thousands of years of loving and following Jesus have found that this fundamental idea of the tithe is a good guideline for our lives. That it is pleasing to God, that it guides us in the ways of generosity and helps us have a more healthy relationship with our money and stuff, or maybe a healthier unattachment to our money and our stuff. But wow, this can be a real struggle, right? Pressures and distractions consume us. Unexpected expenses take over. Worry, fear, and a scarcity mentality stop us in our tracks. And sometimes by the time we get around to giving to God, too often there is just not much left. I know from personal experience that tithing, that giving in this way can be a struggle. My husband, Curtis, and I have been married for 26 years, and over this time, we have had less and more income, less and more financial stressors, less and more hardship, less and more financial security. Throughout all of that, I can say that committing ourselves to working toward a tithe and continuing to work at it and to give in this way this spiritual practice has powerfully helped us keep the most important things at center and has helped us break the hold of idolatry of money and stuff and has honestly been a lot of fun too. It is fun and it is such a joy to give generously. I also want to share with you that my family believes in giving our tithe to our local church. We will quite often give more than that into other mission and ministry work and organizations and even into secular nonprofit organizations that do good work in our community and world. But we are committed first and foremost to bringing that first and most substantial giving to our local church. We believe that there has never been a more effective and efficient agent for changing the world for the better than local churches. With remarkably few resources, local churches for thousands of years have been doing tremendously miraculous works. I think what is most amazing and compelling about this is the longevity of the goodness our church can do. Because effective churches, healthy churches that love and follow Jesus most often don't just help one generation of people. Effective, healthy local churches invest in replicating and growing by reaching new people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Healthy local churches shape those peoples into disciples who love and follow Jesus, who give generously and sacrificially in order to form and shape new disciples of Jesus Christ. This self-replicating nature of the church means that one local congregation within three or four generations can change millions of lives and countless communities. I am proud of the fruits that are born from the tree of our local churches, our descendants, both religious and secular charitable organizations, born out of Christians from local churches engaged in serving the world. The Red Cross, Goodwill Industries, Wouldn't It Be Lovely, Compass for Kids, Chaddock, Babyfold, just a very few very fine examples. So with our prayers, presence, gifts, and service, and witness, my family and I intend to be a part of raising up the next generation of Christians who will love and follow Jesus into new ways to meet new needs that continue to emerge in our chaotic and broken world. This is why we give our full tithe into our local church, into Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, where we love God and love neighbor and change the world. I also want to say that giving is possible at virtually every income level and that our loving God wants to help you through that. Maybe starting at 10%, that is just not for you right away, but you can take a step. Perhaps you can give 2% or 5% or 7%. What matters is to get started on it, to make the commitment and plan and go for it. 
God certainly understands who you are and where you are and your life circumstances. And God will help you make the shifts and adjustments necessary for you to become more and more joyfully generous. So what does all of this mean? What does it mean to God? What does it mean to us? You know, from the earliest biblical times, the first way people worshipped God was by building an altar and offering the fruit of one's labor onto that altar to God. They would burn the sacrifice of an animal or grain as a way to show gratitude, devotion, and desire to honor God. In the Bible, it says the scent of this burning offering was described as pleasing to God. But it's really not the smell of burnt meat or grain. Uh, is something that God loves. Instead, God could certainly see that people were giving a meaningful gift that expressed love and faith and the desire to please and honor God. That is surely the kind of thing that moves God's heart. When we give in this same spirit, our tithes and offerings bless the Lord. I love the way Jesus puts it in our Bible reading from Luke today. Jesus tells us that when we give with love and faith and mercy, this blesses God and that blessing overflows. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God is blessed by our giving. Isn't that an amazing thought and image that our generosity blesses God? When we give generously, we also find that our hearts are changed. When we are generous to God, to our families, friends, neighbors, and those in need, our hearts are filled with joy, filled up and enlarged even. When we give generously, we become more generous. The spiritual practice of being generous forms us into actual generous people. Amazing. When we give generously, we also find the blessings of God. Now, this doesn't work the, some, the same way that some Christians say it does. They say that if you give, then God will give more back to you, like some kind of mystical chain letter or, or God karma. But that's not it. We don't give so that we can get something in return. But we do find that when we give generously to God, when we tithe, we actually do grow in discipleship, in faith, and we have great joy and exhilaration in living in and trusting God's promises. Our Bible reading from Malachi brings home this very point. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse and thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. This does not mean that everything in our lives will be perfect if we tithe. It does not mean that you will receive an unexpected windfall this week or that you won't have unexpected bills or a job loss. It does mean our faith will be strengthened such that we are sustained and can grow through the ups and downs of life. It does mean that we will be able to experience deeply the abundant blessings of God that he gives us each and every day. It does mean that we join in the joy of generosity with all that we have and with all that we are. Amen. Join me in singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Jesus Christ invites everyone to this meal of Holy Communion. Wherever you are and whoever you are, church member or not a church member, with your culture and race, as a child, youth, adult, with your gender identity and your sexual orientation, whether you feel lost or found, sitting alone or gathered with others, in the fullness of who you are, in whatever state you find yourself today, and wherever you are, you are welcome to participate in this holy meal, however you want to participate today. I encourage you, if you have not already done so, to get your bread or crackers, your baked good up close with you and your juice or beverage that you've brought with you so that you can celebrate communion with us. We're gonna continue in prayers and I'm gonna invite you to join aloud in the responses right at the beginning. And we'll have an opportunity for you to offer your own prayers aloud or in your hearts or in the comment section as we go. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Loving God, we thank you for creating us in your image, that we are intimately bound together with you, in you, and through you, that even when we break away from you, your love is always seeking us out, and you always welcome us home. We thank you for Jesus, in whom your abundant hope and never-ending love is made real to us and in us. We are so grateful that you feed us and heal us through this communion meal. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that makes the fruit of hope and generosity grow in and through us, reviving and strengthening us to love and follow you into your work in the world. We offer the prayers of our hearts to you today. Merciful God, in full trust and confidence, speaking them aloud, sharing them in the comments, and holding them in our hearts. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, for all who need your healing in body, mind, spirit, and relationship, especially all who are ill with COVID-19, those in the hospital and intensive care units and healing from surgery, those who are receiving cancer treatment, all who are struggling with addiction, all who feel lost and separated from relationship with others and with you. We hold close all who are grieving, knowing that you enfold them in your care. We pray for our world, especially for people living in the midst of the reality of war, violence, and natural disaster, particularly in Afghanistan, Sudan, Ethiopia, and people who live with violence in their homes. We pray for our world and the environment, for us to work together to stop global climate change and to care for one another and our planet in this necessary way. We are so grateful to you today for the abundant blessings of our lives, merciful God. We are humbled and thankful for all of the gifts and resources you give us and for all the ways you call us to share generously and powerfully with our church and community for all the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and particularly as we prepare for our next community vaccination clinic. We thank you for healing and hope, for birthdays and for anniversaries, for celebrations that are small and celebrations that are large, and for all the ways we see and experience the love of Jesus each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, receive all of our prayers, spoken aloud, in our hearts, and in the comments. I invite you to pick up your bread. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can put your bread down and you can pick up your cup. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. You can put your cup down. And so remembering your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of love and service, intimately bound with Christ's offering for us. I invite you to lift up your hands as we pray for the Holy Spirit. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ that we may be for the world the living body of Christ redeemed and empowered by his saving love. You can put your hands down. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Jesus comes again and we feast with him and one another face to face at his heavenly banquet table. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, connected in all places and in all times, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Please join me in praying the prayer Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in singing, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we will eat are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and changing us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your bread. Eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. I invite you to pick up your cup. Drink and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. And please join with me in our prayer of thanks. Eternal God, thank you for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us through the bread and cup. Send us from this meal in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for your dedicated and generous support of the programs and ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. During this season of Thanksgiving, whether or not you support your church by your time, your talents, your gifts, your prayers, your presence, or your witness, or all of the above, we are particularly thankful for you. And we are very excited because coming up on this Saturday, we have a wonderful opportunity to improve the health and safety of our community. It's going to be the fourth in a series of community vaccine clinics hosted by Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's going to take place on Saturday, November 13th from 1 till 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We are going to have first shots, second shots, booster shots. We are going to have Pfizer, Moderna, and J&J &J vaccines available to provide the entire spectrum of protection for our community. That is the one surest way to return our community to normal. And we look forward to providing this opportunity. Of course, there's going to be a lot of help that's going to be necessary to make this a success. So we're going to need help setting up. We're going to need help with hospitality. We're going to need help with cleanup and teardown. And of course, we're going to need help with the expenses of hosting this community. 
if you can help out, please take the advantage to let us know right now. Number one, there is, and you can follow the QR code right on the screen, a sign-up sheet for volunteers to help us out with the clinic. Number two, if you go to the DAUMC online giving portal at our website, you will have the opportunity to provide financial support that will allow us to make this vaccine clinic another huge success for our partners and for our community. This is a wonderful opportunity and we hope that you will take advantage of it. Now starting next Sunday, we're going to enter into the celebration phase of sharing God's gift. And we hope you'll join us as we hear Reverend Michael Potts bring the message of the Word of God to us. Then we'll be celebrating Thanksgiving weekend. And on the 28th of November, it is the first weekend of Advent, that four-week period of time leading into the coming of the Christ child. Of course, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to give your support to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. That's why we provided the online giving portal at the beginning of the pandemic so that you can donate without leaving your home. You can also use automatic bill pay using your bank, automated bank draft using DAUMC's bank, and of course you're always free to bring your check into the church, leave it in the office, place it in one of the giving boxes during in-person worship in the sanctuary. No matter how you do it, please know that your contributions are helping to change lives right here in our community. Now it's time to return to worship. Please join us in singing, sent forth by God's blessing. Thank you for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We just hope that this whole experience has been meaningful and wonderful and uplifting and empowering for you, that you will join with us again for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 815 and at 1030. We love you. We want to get to know you. We want to be able to pray with you. So please use that contact form. And remember, there's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. And also to make sure to put your email address there so that we can connect with you and follow up with you. And now as you go into your day, go with the love of God, with the grace of Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit to inspire and lead you in wonderful, generous giving and service each and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.